and technology, but they had values which were much greater than anything we had in the Western world. The people, although they didn't have much materially, they were happier and more satisfied with their life than most of us in the Western world were. And this brought me to become a regular attender to programs of the Krishna Consciousness Society. At that time, they had already opened a center in London. Some people had come from the USA. The founder of our society, although he came from India, he began the movement in the USA and he sent people to London. And I had the opportunity to start hearing the lectures and I was deeply impressed with the commitment and the lifestyle that I saw that people were not just simply speaking something, but they were actually practicing something. They lived according to the teachings. I thought that was something special. Generally, you know, people talk philosophy, but they don't live it. They just simply talk these things, but they don't actually do it. They don't live according to it. But I did find that kind of commitment among the members of the Krishna community, that they were very dedicated. They talked and they acted according to the teachings. And so this had a, a deep impression on me, and so much so that I also became a member of the society, and I've taken up, as Prabhu said, now for more than 50 years. Uh, I've, I've, somebody asked me recently, I was giving a lecture, I was in Delhi at the time, and I was giving a lecture there to the our community, and someone asked me, what were you doing with your life before you joined the Krishna consciousness movement? So I told them, I was wasting my life. <laughs> and, and so when I told them that, I was quite surprised. They all clapped. <laughs> they applauded. They thought, very nice. They, that, that they appreciated that I had realized that I was really wasting my life because I was simply engaged in materialistic activities which were not doing any real good for my soul. There's a biblical saying that what does a man profit if he gain the whole world but lose his eternal soul? So I think this is an important point to think about. We want to understand ourselves, not just simply in terms of the body and the demands of the body, which are basically there in animal civilization. Within the animal civilization, there is also eating and sleeping and mating and depending. But human life is something special. Definitely, we're not animals. We want to understand the value of the human life. And that human existence is meant for inquiry and investigation into the absolute, to understand the nature of our existence. Who am I? Why am I here? Where are we going in the future? Maybe many of you have read the book, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> it's an interesting little story. So we hear about Alice going into the Wonderland. And as she enters the Wonderland, she says to the first person she meets, where do I go from here? So he asked her, where do you want to go? And she said, well, I don't really know. So he replied to her, then it doesn't matter which way you go. All right? So th this is something we can think about also. But 
where do we want to go? Do you think about it? I said it a lot. When I was a young man, as a student, I was very radical and I was and inquiring, trying to understand more about life. And I said, why? My, my own spiritual teacher, he used to say that the, and we're running is there any difference? The dog, what is his business? Is where is food, where is sleep, and so on. And if we're running on our four wheels with the same mentality, it's not, there's no real big difference. We want to understand that the value of human life, and it begins with inquiry. And this is what we learn from the treasure of the East, which is the Vedic literature. Veda, Veda means knowledge, and all knowledge is there in the Vedas. And they tell us about how to understand this human life and how to make the best use of this life. We want to inquire, who am I? What will happen at the end of life? We have just been through the, the pandemic, and so many people died. We lost so many friends, dear ones. They're taken from us. Where do they go? What happens? We want to understand the proper use of this human form of life. So actually our spiritual nature is awakened through the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Just a few minutes ago, we heard the other members reciting the Maha Mantra. Mantra. Mantra is now in the English dictionary. It's a word many of us are familiar with. It's from Sanskrit. Man means a mind and tra means to free. So the effect of the mantra is to free the mind, to take the mind away from all the anxiety and all the stress or the depression the problems which are there within the mind. By regularly reciting the mantra, we can awaken our pure spiritual consciousness. And it's a very simple mantra. Some mantras are much more complicated, but this mantra is very simple. It's just made up of three words, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. And by regularly reciting this mantra, we can feel a transformation in our consciousness. We can feel an awakening of our spiritual existence. I certainly felt that when I began to chant first time in the beginning, even before knowing anything about this movement or these teachings. I didn't know anything at all. I didn't know who's Krishna, but th they had released a recording of the Maha Mantra, and it was a popular record. It was regularly played on the radio and the, even on television. Sometimes we'd see people also singing Maha Mantra, and I used to also sing. I didn't know why, but I just enjoyed reciting and singing this mantra to myself. So this is actually the awakening, the beginning of the awakening of our spiritual consciousness. And as we go on, we continue to chant the mantra, the same mantra, and we can come to higher levels of consciousness. We can experience it. The topmost platforms of yoga and self-realization, everything comes about simply from this mantra, meditation. Meditation is popular. People talk about meditation. It's not silent meditation, however, which is recommended in this age, but rather it's vocal. It's making use of the tongue to recite the mantra. We should use the tongue 
to recite the mantra and the ears to hear. And when you do the mantra meditation properly, then it enters into the heart and it actually awakens that consciousness there, which is within the heart. So this is the experience in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. It's not difficult. We're not selling the mantra. Some people do have mantras for sale. This one is free for everyone. And we do say that the louder you say the mantra, the more powerful it becomes. And if you give the mantra to others, you get more mercy yourself. So that's one reason why we came here today. We wanted to take the opportunity to give you also this mantra by giving the mantra to you. We also benefit ourselves. We need benefit. We're all looking to benefit, right? We want some benefit. We want to know what is the real benefit. The real benefit is to save our soul, to bring us out of this low consciousness, to bring us up to a higher consciousness, to understand our spiritual nature, how we are spiritual beings living in the material body. If you'd like to know more about this, then we encourage you to read the Bhagavad Gita. It's a very wonderful book. It's been uh, studied and commented on by people like Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Thoreau, Henry Thoreau and Mahatma Gandhi and so many other great souls. They've all appreciated the words of the Bhagavad Gita. And in, in the recent times, you find even famous basketball players, and <laughs> sportsmen, they also appreciate the Bhagavad Gita. There was one famous basketball player. He quoted the Bhagavad Gita. He said, it's, it's like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Stand and fight. <laughs> he was a basketball player. <laughs> it's a rough game. So anyway, he, was, he had read the Bhagavad Gita and he'd taken something from it. That's the point. That this Bhagavad Gita has something for everyone. And if you can just keep a copy on your bookshelf in your, or in your office, keep it on your table and read a little bit, just little portions of it regularly, you can get so much benefit. You can get so much knowledge. Actually, this knowledge is already within us, but we just have to awaken it by hearing. It all comes about by hearing. Hearing is the first step. So you hear and then you will go on and repeat, just as I am repeating today what I heard. So we hope you will also hear, and you can go on in the future. You can also repeat. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Maharaj, for uh, uh, giving us a very nice session thoughtful, thought-provoking. Uh, just the agenda, what you're going to do now, 